In the last module, we looked at the one-factor repeated measures analysis. In this module, we'll expand that to include factorial repeated measures designs. Now, our repeated measures model we had before was relatively straightforward. We had the score on y as a function of the grand mean, a row effect, that is, the overall offset for some individual, a treatment offset, so the overall differences between the treatments we were applying, and finally some error. Now, the two-factor factorial repeated measures model looks a little bit more complicated, and I promise this will be the last of these model declarations I'll show you. But let's actually work through these in groups. So our model effect has main effects like before, the alpha j's and the beta k's. We have the two-way interaction. In this case, we only have one two-way interaction that is a part of our fixed structure that is relating to our actual manipulation or the conditions of our experiment. And then we have subject effects, so effects that are due to differences across subjects and differences across subjects in relation to their response to our factors. So the overall offset for subject, that is the S effect here or the row effect in the Greek letter, that refers to the overall offset for a subject, the degree to which a subject is different on average to the grand mean. Now, the other interaction terms, the ones that are subject interactions, are kind of special. The rho by alpha is the degree to which individual subjects differ in the response to factor A. That was actually the error term in our previous model. In this case, we actually have degrees of freedom to estimate that independent of the overall error. I won't get into too many details there, but I want you to notice that this rho by alpha is still an error term for the overall alpha effect. That is, the degree to which subjects differ in their response to factor A is a meaningful error term in understanding how big or stable the factor A effect is. In a similar way, the rho by B interaction, the degree to which subjects differ in their response to factor B, is a meaningful error term relative to the B effect. So this will be the error term for beta K, and rho by alpha will be the error term for alpha J. Now the two-way interaction has its own error term as well. It's the epsilon ijk here. Now, as we saw in the previous one-factor linear model, eijk is actually an interaction term itself. It is actually the rho by alpha by beta term. We don't normally call it that. It's simply the residual or error in the model. But it is, again, the relevant error term for knowing whether the alpha beta, the interaction of our fixed effects, is actually big or small. Now don't worry too much about this model setup. That's why the add-in is helpful since it will develop these model terms automatically for you. So let's actually move forward and see how we would fit this model in jump using the add-in. Turns out it'll be as straightforward as fitting our one-factor linear model. We just need to know which place to put each of our different columns. Now the dataset we'll be working with will be a modification to the wine rating dataset we saw before. But in this case, we actually have each subject rate eight different wines. So four different wine types, but some of the wines will be labeled as cheap wines and some as expensive wines. Notice that this design is a full factorial design. So each of the different wine types will be labeled once as cheap and once as expensive. Now we'll randomize the order for each subject. That'll be important in terms of our methodology. But notice that what we can obtain statistically is an estimate of whether individuals actually rate wines better or worse depending on how they're labeled. So this is a great psychology experiment because we'll be able to tell to what degree the labeling of the wine is really influencing the ratings people are making. And I'll just hint that this study has actually been done and it turns out how a wine is labeled is actually considerably important in how people make ratings about it. So even experts do get influenced by the labels of wines. And certainly me as a novice, I absolutely do. So let's take a look at how we'll set up this analysis in Jump and what inferences we can draw.